I'm going to take a look at the concept of confidence intervals for stats. Um, specifically, we're going to start with a single population mean and just talk about the concept alone. And in separate videos, I'll talk about calculating these various components of it. So for just the concept of a confidence interval, I'm going to look at um, Rossman chance applets. So let me go back here. Um, just rossmanchance.com slash applets and go to this third one down in the sampling distribution simulations. Now this is a finite population. Um, I prefer population model down here. And this one, there's not really a direct link to it. You kind of have to work your way to get here. But this is the one I like because it's kind of simpler than a finite population. We just have sort of this infinite population with a normal curve here. And so uh, the idea of confidence intervals is taking one sample from a population. And I'm going to leave everything default. I'm going to take a sample of 10 measurements from this population, which is a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 5. So we see that we've overestimated the mean and we've overestimated the standard deviation. Now imagine taking just these 10 measurements and trying to figure out what this population mean is, trying to estimate this value of 10 from these statistics. That's the idea of what we're trying to do. So what we'd start with is we'd say the mean is close to 10. So you gotta pretend like you don't know this information on the left and all you know is this middle panel um, right in here. So you're saying, I think that the population mean is close to 10.796, but I imagine that there's probably some error in that estimation. So that first concept is a point estimate, having a single measurement that you believe is close to your population parameter. In this case, the population parameter is mu population mean. So down here, that's what we'll be trying to estimate with the confidence interval. We'll be kind of bracketing it between two values or using a point estimate with a plus or minus margin of error. So you could see right there, there is a formula to calculate margin of error. I'm going to do that in a later video. So the way that this uh, margin of error is affected, it kind of comes down to several things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take um, 10,000 samples of this same size. So these are sample size 10. So the sampling distribution has a standard deviation of 5 divided by square root of 10. Using those kind of ideas from the last um, chapter that we had. Now, um, this is the mean of the sampling distribution. Um, but keep in mind that what we're looking at now is individual samples. So what we want to think about is all these individual samples here. We have many of them are very close to a mean of 10. So a lot of them have um, kind of accurately estimated the population mean. Some of them did not. Some of them were as low as even five or four. So imagine taking a sample from a population with a mean of 10 and you only get a mean of four in your sample. That's way low. That's extremely low. That means that your sample was all kind of probably down here to the left of mean or, or for the most part um, below average. So we see that there's a potential to severely underestimate the population mean down here. And there's a potential to severely overestimate the population mean up here. So we have a plus or minus margin of error. And what we want to do is decide how far over do we want to go. We would probably want to avoid um, using a, an extremely large margin of error because that wouldn't really make us look, um, you know, very intelligent. You know, so if I said, um, kind of going to my point estimate here, um, my last sample that I took, I'll go with that one, has a mean of 8.9 or uh, rounds up to about 9. I'll be saying the population mean is, is probably close to 9, but maybe plus or minus 10. You know, that would not be a very good interval. It's extremely wide and it really doesn't look like we've done much scientific work. So we're going to need to dial that in a bit. Do we want to go 
plus or minus 2? Do we want to go plus or minus 4? It's going to depend on what percent of this curve we want to keep and what percent we want to throw away. So what we're going to do is kind of at a certain point cut off the ends, cut off the tails, and say these are just too extreme, and we're going to dial that in a little bit. And so the confidence level is the middle percent that we want to keep. Alpha is the proportion on the edges that we're going to ignore. And usually we're right about at 95%, ignoring 5% of outcomes, which is the top 2.5% and the bottom 2.5%. So um, that's kind of the concept of a, of a confidence interval. We use the sampling distribution to turn that into a margin of error. We use a T distribution to kind of inflate things, and I'll talk about that in a separate video. I'm going to have a whole video just about T, and then we put it all together as a confidence interval.